Hello, my name is Natalie Ngayek, and for my final, I looked into boarding schools in Alaska. Um, so learning and education is always changing. Um, the boarding schools changed many aspects in Alaska Native people's lives, and there's always a positive and, and a negative side to things, of course. And there are many different contributing factors to how boarding schools were ran, how students felt after attending, there are many different stories to be told. I read an article that interviewed a couple elders, and then I myself was lucky enough to interview one of my uncles. So a brief history of Alaskan education. Um, students were sent to boarding schools because villages usually did not offer education above the eighth grade. So they, would, they were able to stay in their villages until a certain age before they were sent to boarding schools. Um, some of them were in Alaska and some of them were actually in the lower 48. So for some of these kids they had to travel many many hours away from miles from home and it was not something that they were used to. And these schools were run by the BIA or the Federal Bureau of Indian Affairs. Um, but a lot of schools were also usually run by churches. These are more common in the villages. Um, you can see the impact of these churches today in villages. And the government actually played a big role in boarding schools. Um, the government were, they were able to control things um, like religion, their medicine, law, fishing, hunting, and the land. Um, the government ended up taking a lot of culture, language, and traditions away. And that made Alaska Natives a little bit nervous to trust the government. Um, in 1819, the Civilization Fund Act was put into place, and this was something that was supposed to help, quote-unquote, civilize the Native people. So the boarding school experience, um, it always depended on the school, location, educators, and, of course, the students' drive to learn. Um, depending on these factors, um, it would depend on these factors on how their outcome and their opinion on boarding schools were. Some of the better named schools are Mount Edgecombe, Copper Valley, Chemway, and St. Mary's. Some of the bad schools, or they weren't really looked at as the best places to attend, are Wrangell Institute and Gnome Belts. So some of the positive stories that I was able to read about were students that usually attended Mount Edgecombe, Copper Valley, Chemway, and St. Mary. They felt like these schools were really focused on helping them prepare for their future. Um, a lot of them had hands-on teaching, which is how many people, especially I feel like Native people, tend to learn better because in my dad's culture, we usually watch things first for Yupik. So, and he still does this today. We watch things first and then we try them ourselves. So my dad can fix cars just from watching YouTube videos, which I think is pretty amazing. Um, and a lot of these students that had positive stories were able to attend college or even join the military, which is a big step for many people. Um, the students felt that these schools gave them tools for success, like independence, friendships, and good networking. Some of the more negative stories um, talked about abuse. They felt lonely, <clears throat> and it didn't help family or community it kind of messed that up and it left some students with post-traumatic stress disorder social phobias and some even were led to suicide and alcohol abuse <clears throat> excuse me a lot of these students did not feel that they were prepared for their future um and they did have some negative stories the national resource center for american um American Indian, Alaska Native, and Hawaiian elders interviewed an unnamed elder. He was around the age of 60 during this interview. And he talked about how the boarding schools he attended to, which he spoke of Wrangell, um, he did not feel like attending boarding schools prepared him for parenthood. He felt that he did not know how to raise a child just from attending the boarding school where he saw a lot of violence. And he ended up needing to talk to his wife to help him raise the, their kids. Um, so that was one story. 
Um, so why send children to boarding schools if there are a lot of negative negativity? Like I had spoken, like I had talked about earlier, a lot of villages didn't offer education over the eighth grade. Something that I thought was interesting though was that during the gold rush, there were schools for both white and native um, students, so they were um, segregated. <clears throat> And while the white students were able to attend all of their years of school close to home, native students were still being sent to boarding schools. This brings Christopher Cook in. He is a lawyer and he got asked to help um, a village out to get a high school in their own village. He ended up winning. Um, he went against the Board of Education and this led to other villages um, to ask Cook for his help, which then brings the Hooch versus Alaska. This is a very famous case. This is the reason why um, villages today are now able to have up to 12th grade in their villages. Um, originally, the state was saying that they did not have enough money to pay for all of these schools, but in the end, they were able to win. Um, and the hooch story is something that my uncle, um, who is in his early 70s, he is very thankful for that. Um, he really wanted me to look more into the hooch story, but I felt that I was running out of room, even though it is very important. I was looking more into the outcome of students' lives. So I asked my uncle to share his story. Um, it was a very... Um, touching story. It was very sad to hear some parts and to watch his facial expressions as he told me his story. He went to multiple boarding schools and he um, attended Wrangell and Mount Edgecombe and he talked about hard times at these two schools specifically. Um, he, the worst thing he felt though was homesickness. He said that he couldn't look away from his home village as the plane flew away and he even tried getting out of it by writing to my grandparents, begging him to come home. But they told him that once he started something, he had to finish it. And so he still lives by that rule today. And he's very thankful in the end after attending, he went to, he got to go to St. Mary's and that was um, life changing for him. He says attending St. Mary's is the reason why he is so successful today or why he feels so, <laughs> feels so successful today. Um, and he's very thankful for our grandparents and really pushing him to get an education. So I also interviewed my cousin who is 20, in his early 20s. So he himself attended Mount Edgecombe. So my uncle and my cousin both attended the same school. So I thought it'd be interesting to hear their stories now that things are so different. Um, when we talked about, um, he went to Mount Edgecombe. So we talked about, I asked him if he, ever felt like there was too much violence, but he said that he didn't ever fear his safety the way our uncle had when he attended Mount Edgecombe. Um, he said it was a normal high school. Kids argued. He talked about um, staff there is still mainly white. There are a few, I think he said three educators there currently who are Alaska Native. Um, so I just thought it was very interesting and kind of relieving to hear that things have changed. So, like I said, there are many stories to be told about education in Alaska. Um, there are some hardships there, and a lot of, but there are a lot of success stories as well. Um, by sharing these stories, the people of Alaska were able to ch change the way that education is today. Um, and all the elders were able to use their voices to speak against the abuse that they were forced to live through. Um, the effects of boarding schools are still alive with many elders today, like my uncle, but now they're not afraid to share their stories, and I'm very thankful for that. Um, thanks to um, Christopher Cook and the Molly Hooch case, boarding schools like Wrangell aren't around anymore. The way of learning and teaching is always, always changing, and we are... I think we can only keep learning from here.